Hello, music theory students. This is the second video uh, about the remaining materials you need to know about the minuet and for your analysis. The last video we looked at rhythm and the neighbor 6-4, um, and this is where we ended off. Uh, and this video is going to be looking at the two other uh, new 6-4 chords. One of them is the pedal 6-4 and the other is the arpeggiated 6-4. Okay, so we ended the last video uh, looking at the neighbor 6-4, and so we will begin this next with the pedal 6-4. So the example that you have on the, on the screen shows this pedal 6-4, uh, which is right here. And if you notice the movement of the soprano, and this is what's very important here, is it's moving in passing motion. The bass, think about it as just being on an E at this point, the bass is staying the same. It's staying on an E. Okay, so that's what's most important. So the bass is staying on the same note. So let's just listen to this um, example here. Okay, so that's an example of the pedal 6-4. How do you frame the pedal 6-4? So if you're gonna, if you have a chord that extends for two measures, you can put the pedal 6-4 on beat three, like the neighbor 6-4, okay? So we have a tonic chord that's being held for two measures. This is very common in the first five measures of, your, of uh, one of your phrases of your minu minuet. And the soprano moves up by step. Okay, in the pedals, in the, in the neighbor 6-4, this would have returned back down. It would have been an upper neighbor. In this case, we have a passing going up in the, in the soprano. Okay, so that's how you would frame the pedal 6-4 from if it was going from a downbeat to a downbeat. If you have a tonic uh, triad and you want to just keep it within a measure, um, then it would be on beat 2. So notice that this is always on a weaker beat. Uh, these 6-4 chords for the neighbor as well as the pedal 6-4. Okay, so this is now on beat 2. In this case, we're passing from scale degree, well, from the fifth of the chord down to the third, and that pedal 6-4 happens on the weak beat. Okay, so those are the two framing possibilities for the pedal 6-4, very similar to the neighbor 6-4. Here are different ways to realize it. Now, again, like the neighbor 6-4, this can be any triad tonic triad, any kind of triad that you're extending um, for a bar or for two or for two bars, for a measure or two measures. Um, in this case, this is showing you how uh, you could realize the pedal 6-4 over a dominant chord. And this is a dominant chord that's only here for one measure. Um, so in this case, and again, also applying what you saw with the neighbor 6-4 is if we use in this case, dactylic rhythm, we can create a suspension uh, to, to introduce, in some sense, the pedal 6-4 chord. Notice my soprano is moving by step, okay, in passing motion. And an inner voice, if it needs to, it can leap to the other note of the chord. So the soprano has a G to begin with, and then it goes to an F, which is the fourth above the bass, and then the other voice makes its way to the sixth above the bass. The final inner voice will be on unison with the bass, right? You only, you only want one chord, uh, one uh, of a fourth above and a sixth above, and then the bass, and then the other voice carries um, the octave. Okay, so that's one way to do the pedal six four. You can also, and this is just a five carrying on uh, through to a five. You can also do this with a 5-7, which is really interesting here, right? So um, in this case, we have a C, E, G, B flat, okay? Notice um, the uh, G is missing, the chordal fifth in this case is missing here, but we have the chordal seventh. Uh, here we have a pedal 6-4. So an inner voice is again, like before, is sharing an octave above the bass, and then the fourth and the sixth is being realized through passing in the soprano and then through neighbor note in another in another voice. Okay, and again, we have Bachic rhythm, so we're creating the suspension on the other part of this um, of, of this pedal. So it, as it's coming out of the pedal, here it's as it's going into the pedal. Okay, showing you those two different ways to introduce dissonance here. 
Um, you can also create your pedal six four going from a five triad to a five seven. That's a really fun way to do it. And there's two options here, both of them showing um, dissonances or in this case, a syncopation on that second beat as you're as you're going into the pedal 6-4 here and as you're leaving the pedal 6-4 here into the 5-7. Okay, so here we have a 5 triad. Through passing motion in two voices, we're then ending up with the 5-7. So this scale degree 5, or not scale degree 5, the fifth of the chord, the chordal fifth, is moving up to the chordal seventh to introduce that 7. And so the, the pedal 6-4 is then coming out of two passing motions that are moving up. So going to the sixth above the bass note and this is going to the fourth above the bass note with a syncopation in there. Okay, and then here uh, again, uh, another five going to a five seven. Again, it's through passing, but this time it's back kick rhythm. So then we create a retardation on the final um, quarter note of the measure. Okay, so there's uh, the different ways to realize the pedal six four. Um, both with, with any triad, but also works particularly well when you have a five moving to a five seven or even a five seven that you are holding for a full measure. Okay, the final six four chord, this is the simplest of all of them. You have seen this already, is the arpeggiated six four. And this is simply when the bass decides to play all the notes of the triad. And this is, uh, it, this is allowable um, because you're just holding a chord. So the root isn't in question. It does go for a moment to a, um, a uh, dissonant chord, right? So that six, four chord is dissonant, but it's, it's, it's very, very, um, um, because you're holding the chord for so long, it doesn't, your, our ear doesn't hear that as really changing too much. Okay, so it's just arpeggiating the bass. Uh, and there's two different ways to do this here. We're, and I'll talk about that on the next slide, but let me just play this for you so you can hear this. Okay, so I'll stop it there. Uh, so you have a sense of that. Okay, so this is realizing this arpeggiated 6-4. You simply, within a measure, um, you just move through the three notes of the tonic triad or whatever triad that you are holding over that uh, measure. So here's one way just in an arpeggiation figure. Here we have more of a broken chord figure. Okay, so both of these are allowing for that arpeggiated 6-4 in different places in the measure but simply you're just playing all the notes of that tonic triad um, to, uh, to create that arpeggiated 6-4. Um, and the final way, so this is uh, using all three notes of the triad in the bass. Here you're simply going 1-5-1, one, one, but the notes of the triad isn't changing. So you might say, well, how do I know that, that that's not a prolongation? It's because none of the other voices are moving to the notes of the five chords. So in this case, we have a one going to a five, going to a one. All the other notes are carrying the D, F sharp, A notes of the triad, okay? So there again, we have another example of our arpeggiated six four. You've seen this at the final close of the accompanied melodies when you were doing your analysis. I don't know if you noticed that, but there is arpeggiated six fours being used in that already. Um, we just kind of ignored it and didn't talk about it, but this is used all over the place. It's a really nice way to elaborate the bass. There's whole movements that are written with kind of a running bass where the bass is, is arpeggiating through all the notes of whatever chord is being held at that moment. Okay, and there, uh, this ends all our discussions on arpeggiated 6-4, on pedal 6-4, the neighbor 6-4, and the different rhythms that you can use when um, composing a minuet.